Good morning, boys and girls. Do you know that God is with you and will help you even during the worst of times? Actually, I should say, especially during the worst of times. Recently, I've been a little anxious, a little bit of fear has popped in, and one way that I've learned to deal with that when this happens, and you can do this too, is I write down exactly what it is that I'm afraid of, what I'm fearful of. Like for example, in your household, maybe maybe one of your parents lost a job and you're worried about that, or, or maybe uh, they're arguing and that makes you worry, or maybe you have a big game coming up and you're nervous about it, you could write that down. Uh, anyway, so you write these things down and you present them to God. And you say, Dear God, will you take these things from me? Will you carry the burden for me? And that's what he does. He carries our burdens. And then a tangible way for you to remember that you gave him these things is you could crumble that paper up and throw it in the garbage can. You could rip it up, throw it away. You could burn it. That way you'll remember that you gave those things to God and there's no need to be concerned or to worry about them anymore. Let's read in the uh, Bible a couple verses that reminds us that he has our back. Isaiah 41:13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, for I will help you. And then in the book of Romans, chapter 8, 31, it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then our, our memory verse for today comes from Psalm 23. It's verse 4, and it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So we know that God will be with us, especially during very difficult times. my shepherd I'll not want He makes me lie in pastures green He leads me by the still still waters His goodness restores my
Hi kids. Well, our lesson today is about a man named Stephen, and it can be found in Acts, the book of Acts, chapters 6 and 7. But before we get into the lesson, let's uh, say a word of prayer. Oh Lord God, we just thank you so much for all your blessings, for your protection, for your provision. Um, I just want to lift up all the kids and their families and ask that you would be watching over and protecting them from this virus, from accidents, um, and that you would be providing for them, Lord, uh, for their parents. And I pray that you would take away any fear or anxiety that they're feeling, Lord. Give their parents wisdom and discernment and strength to help the kids through this time, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our lesson about Stephen starts off where we left off last week. Last week, you learned about how the apostles had appointed several deacons um, to take care of the widows and, and the poor and things like that that they really didn't have that much time to do. They had to appoint other people to do it. And Stephen was chosen because he was a good man and he was full of the Holy Spirit. Well, like I said, our story starts in um, the book of Acts, chapters six and seven. Stephen was a man full of God's grace and power and did great wonders and miraculous signs he led many people to the Lord and baptized them. He healed them. But, unfortunately, he was opposed by members of the synagogue. They secretly persuaded some of the men to say that Stephen had spoken words of blasphemy against God and Moses. This stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They were so upset that they brought him to the Sanhedrin. That's the religious leaders. All the people in the Sanhedrin looked at Stephen and they saw that his face was like that of an angel. And then the chief priest looked at him and he said, Is this true what they say? Well, I don't know about you, but if I had to appear before a bunch of angry religious leaders, I would have been pretty scared. But Stephen wasn't afraid. He wasn't scared. He wasn't anxious. He was calm because he had the Holy Spirit with him, and the Holy Spirit gave him the words to speak to the Sanhedrin. And what he did was he told them the entire history of, of Israel and how God had been with them the whole time. He told them how God had spoken to Abraham and told him to leave his home and go west. Finally, he settled in Judea, where we live now. There, he told Abraham that he would be his descendants would make a great nation and Abraham was amazed because he was old and he didn't have any children but God made a way then he told them about how Joseph was sold into slavery but God was with him and made him one of the most powerful men in Egypt he eventually saved his family from a great famine in the land of Judea and brought them to Egypt in Egypt, the people multiplied, but the Egyptians were afraid of how many Jews there were now, and so they enslaved them. Eventually, God raised up Moses, who opposed Pharaoh, and got him to let God's people go. He led them through the Red Sea, and they escaped Egypt into the Sinai Desert. Then God gave Moses and the people the Ten Commandments, now the people had the Ten Commandments to guide them, but Moses never got to the Promised Land. After Moses died, God raised up Joshua to lead the people of Israel. He led them across the Jordan and into the Promised Land. God helped Joshua and the people conquer all the land. And after many years, God raised up a shepherd boy named David to be the king of Israel. He helped him defeat Goliath, and the kingdom grew. But David wanted to build a house for God, but God wouldn't let him. Instead, he left it to his son, Solomon. Solomon was wise, and the kingdom prospered and grew great. And finally, Solomon built the great temple, God's house in Jerusalem. Well, Stephen finished his speech to the Sanhedrin by saying that you people have always resisted the Holy Spirit. 
You and your fathers have always persecuted God's prophets. You betrayed and murdered Jesus, God's anointed one. When the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and said, Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The Sanhedrin covered their ears and yelled and dragged him out of the city and stoned him. As they were stoning him, he looked up to heaven and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he said, Lord, forgive them of this sin. And then he died. Well, that was quite an exciting story. We saw how Stephen relied on the Holy Spirit to get him through probably the toughest part of his life, the end of it. He also allowed the Holy Spirit to heal people and to bless people and to speak to people about Jesus through him. We have the Holy Spirit too, and we can rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us words to speak, to give us wisdom, and, and to help us through our tough times. So, when the times get tough, just pray to God that he would send his Holy Spirit to fill you up encourage you and strengthen you and give you wisdom. Well, I hope you guys all have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hi, Princess Marnie Pants. Huh? Oh, you look very sad today. Is everything okay? No, I am sad. My grandma, she passed away last week and I'm so, so sad. My heart is sad and I miss her. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I know when we, we have people that we love pass away, I know it's a very tough time. But do you remember the Bible verse this week? It says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23, 4. And I know that's God's words telling us that he will be with us no matter what we go through, even the toughest of times. Yeah. That really helped me. Okay. Well, I have another thing I think will help you. How about if we go out for a little ice cream? And maybe that'll cheer you up some. And we'll go get Charlie. Yay! <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. See you next week. And remember that Bible verse. It may help you, too. <laughs>
And then uh, this is also the option that I was talking about without using um, tape. It's with string and using the three hole punch to uh, punch it in like that and hang it up like that. So yeah, just choose whichever one you wanna do and then we'll do it. So I'm gonna start with a blank sheet of paper, cardstock, and just choose whichever crayon colors you wanna use and whatever um, paint colors you wanna use and then we'll get started. All right, so the two colors I chose were red and orange. Um, and I decided to write on my paper, perfect love casts out all fear. This is based off of a verse in John and it's just a reminder for me that in times of fear, God's perfect love will cast out all that fear and replace it with his goodness. So I'm gonna start writing on that. It's good to get a flat piece of, or flat ground to write on and uh, get going. Make sure when doing this, you press hard and even if you have to go back over it, that's good so that um, the crayon is pretty uh, solid on the paper, all right? All right, I just finished drawing my words. That's what it looks like. And now I'm gonna paint. So I've already chosen my colors that I want to do. I'm going to show you guys how to do that gradient sunset looking one, that one. So I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is yellow. And you just got to make sure to get as much water um, as you can into this little painter thing to mix, uh, mix the paint with it and get it pretty, uh, pretty thin because you want it thin on the brush. It's like, okay. So then after doing that, just start going over it very lightly. It doesn't really show up very much. You just do this. Keep keep dipping it in the, in the water and then dipping it in the paint. It's just kind of like, that's what you're gonna do over the whole thing. A Little bit of water, a little bit of paint, and then paint over it. And it's going to get wet, that's, I mean, it's water paint, so don't worry about the paper bending like how it is right now. That'll figure itself out in the end. Now just keep painting it. This yellow's running out, I'm going to use this one. Alright, and then you're going to get your third color and then just go a little bit lower. Just keep going lower and lower. Just right over the last coat. So this one should show the letters more because I did the letters in orange. Guess I didn't think ahead with that one. All right, that looks a lot better. Okay, so then now you can see the two bottom lines better that I have a darker con color under the, uh, under the crayon. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. You know, just you can, you can go over it as many or as little times as you want. It all just looks pretty cool. The more times you go over it, you can make it look however you want. And then, bam. All right, so this is my finished product. As you can see, um, the orange and the red are a little bit too mixed together. Um, so it's better to use a darker color uh, for your guys' project. But if you don't, then it turns out fine. So just let it uh, dry for a half hour or so, just until you can tell that it's dry. And if you want to attach it with tape, grab your tape, do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Oops and put that on the back, stick it on the back, and boom, to your wall, to your door, whatever you wanna put it on. Or, if you want to do the yarn way, you get your handy dandy hole puncher, and then you put two holes in it, or one hole in the middle, two holes in the sides, like this. Boom, boom, and then, Weave the string 
in one, and then out the other the same way as the first one, and then tie it at the top right here, and then you can hang it wherever you want. You can hang it on your doorknob, you can hang it on the side of your mirror, wherever. You get to choose. Just probably don't hang it on one of your siblings. I don't know if they'll like that very much. But there you go. This is the final product, uh, product. And just a reminder to always focus on God. Even, even when you're you know, in rough times, life does get rough. But God is the constant in your life and he'll never leave you. Hard times come and go, but God is the one constant thing in your life that you can always rely on. And he's, he is love. So anytime you're feeling a little down, just uh, just seek God and he'll pour his love all over you. And uh, you know, have a good day. Stephen's speech to the religious leaders was a great explanation of God's plan to send Jesus. The people listening to Stephen thought that they had gotten rid of Jesus when he was killed on the cross. But God's plan to send Jesus could not be stopped. God raised Jesus from the dead, and through Jesus, we can receive salvation. <laughs>